What is going on guys? Welcome to the ninth pie game tutorial from Centex for Bucky in the new Boston. Where we left off, we were drawing uh, our rectangle. We did fix one problem, but we see we have another problem. That is that our rectangle, as soon as we press any key, it just zooms off the screen super fast because we're probably pushing like a thousand frames a second. So let's close out of this and now we're going to talk about frames per second. How do we control frames per second in pie game? So there's a few things you could do, obviously. We could go to the top and we could import time and then we could kind of like balance time and do the frames per second, you know, and, and you know, do wait times, all this. But no, since frames per second is such a big part of games, it turns out Pygame gives us a way to do frames per second. So uh, that's what we're going to cover here. So first of all, we need to define um, some sort of uh, clock variable and we're going to use the Pygame uh, clock for this. So anywhere, you can pretty much define this wherever you want. I'm going to just throw it. You obviously, you wouldn't want to define it like in your game loop because you would be constantly defining it every single loop and that's kind of silly. And actually that probably, well it would still work I suppose, but yeah that'd be very messy. So obviously keep it out of your game loop and you want to obviously do it before the game loop is initiated. Um, so anyway, just up at the top somewhere. So you've got lead exchange, I'm just going to put it under that. And we're going to say uh, clock equals pygame.time.capital C clock and then empty parameters. So now what this is going to return is going to return us a pygame clock object. So then we can come down, um, come down here and now in our game loop is where we specify uh, the frames per second. And make, basically this will initiate a sort of a sleep function. Um, that will force our game to be exactly the frames per second that we that we specify. So after the update is where I like to throw this. So after the update, we would say clock dot tick, and then in the parentheses is where you specify the frames per second that you want to have. And frames per second is actually a really important variable that is likely to change throughout your your program. And, uh, and it's going to be very, uh, I'm trying to think of a good word, but very important to your program. So for example, let's start with 30. 30 frames per second is kind of the uh, pinnacle frames per second, like the most popularly used one. Like if you're playing video games, generally you want to have 30 frames per second. Now obviously some people get all the way up to 60 frames per second. Um, and that's cool too, especially if you're going to do slow-mo and you want to play slow-mo, 60 frames per second looks really good. But in real time, 30 frames per second is pretty good for the human eye. The human eye can't really... First of all, the human eye doesn't see in frames per second. Um, so people like to say, like, ask, like, how many frames per second can the eye see? Well, the eye doesn't see in frames per second, so that doesn't... It's not really a valid thing, but for, uh, a better uh, thing to say would be the human eye can't really tell the difference between 30 and 50 frames per second. For the most part, some people can... Um, it's kind of like bit rate in music, you know, some people really can tell the difference between 256 and 128 bit music, most people cannot. Um, same thing here, but anyway, uh, enough of that, 30 frames per second, a typical frames per second. So let's just, let's, let's test 30 frames per second though. So here's our little dot, and we hit the arrow key and it's moving, but in my opinion, that's a little fast for a snake game. And uh, just to give you guys an example, we could change this to 60 save and run that and now you'll see that it moves even faster than it had before so now you have a kind of an idea we were probably operating at like 500 frames per second before or something um, so with pi game what do we want well maybe we want probably you know maybe something more like 10 frames per second maybe um, for our snake that's a little better obviously when it's only like one square this is pretty simple. Maybe we would do like 15 or something like that. Like we could say 15. And maybe we'll go with 15 for a while. Well, I, we'll, we'll change this most likely. But you can probably see, well, first of all, this is 15 frames per second. And I'm trying to think what I film at. But I actually film at under 15, I believe. So it depends. It just probably looks a little different on your screen than it does on my screen. But anyway, um, or at least it looks a little different on what you're seeing on the video versus what you're seeing on your computer screen. But... Um, the frames per second plays a huge role because obviously even though that was much smoother on my screen than what you were showing and it obviously it looked fairly smooth on your screen you could tell that it was like kind of like uh, not glitchy so to speak but it's kind of jagged it was not super smooth movement 
But if we were to say do something like this, like let's say we want the x change to be two, we want it to be ten for sure, but we want it two. And because it's, it's a snake game, so generally a snake game is kind of jagged in their movement, um, and then it will work because our snake is going to be built out of you know cu or cubes, uh, squares basically. So it will it will work for snake, but you wouldn't you would want most games to be very smooth. So for example, let's say we, we move it by two pixels. And we change this to, let's do 100 since it's only moving by two pixels. Um, so here it is. Again, it's going to look a little more jagged on, on the video as opposed to if you actually type this out and run it on your computer. But that should be quite a bit more smooth for you um, than before. So now we're moving at 100 frames per second, but each movement is only two pixels. So it's much more fluid and smooth and looks better to the eye. The eye is much less likely to pick up you know, jaggedness. Um, so anyway, we'll hit OK there. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll accept 15 frames per second for now. So that is the Pi Game Clock. Obviously, it just depends on the type of game that you're doing. If you're doing like a first-person shooter, generally you're going to want around 30 frames per second. Um, good luck making a first-person shooter on Pi Game. You should check out some of the code on uh, pygame.org for first-person shooters. They're pretty intense. <laughs> pretty intense code. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll do 15 for now. I can see that probably changing, though. That, that is, that's still pretty fast. Um, but what you can do to make Snake harder is over time, you can speed up the, the speed and all that. Just keep in mind, uh, the frames per second is probably like your last, um, should be like your plan B for changing difficulty or changing the speed of your game. You should always affect the movement variables first and then do the frames per second because the frames per second forces this while loop if it can to run over and over and over and that's going to force the player's computer to try to run that as fast as you're asking it to and if it can't then it can't but if it tries to you're going to be using a lot more processing like say for example this is 15 frames a second moving 10 pixels at a time so we're moving 150 pixels every second so how else might we move 150 pixels? Let's say we want to move 300 now. Well, we could have we could obviously choose 30 here, and so it would be 10 times 30, and we would move 300. Or instead of changing frames per second, we could change these movements here to 20, and now we're moving 20 pixels at a time instead of uh, 10. And the why this is better than changing your uh, your frames per second is you're not, this this way is not going to cost any more processing to the user. But doing it this way with 10 and 10 and then doubling your frames per second, you're literally doubling your processing requirements per second. So just keep that in mind. So that's frames per second. Um, the next video we're going to be continuing on the movement here. We'll add up and down and then we'll uh, continue building towards our final goal of uh, snake game. So stay tuned to the next video. Thank you for watching.